Chad Henney and Brandon Marshall come off their best game together. The new pass duo takes on the established Moss, Brady, and the New England Patriots. Welcome to the Monday Night Football Launch, engineered by GMC. Pats and Dolphins wrapping up week four of the 2010 season. And we welcome you to South Florida. Both of these teams are two and one. The winner will be tied with the Jets for the lead in the AFCs. They both have lost to the Jets for their one setback thus far this season. Now, both teams have shown high-powered offenses in the last couple of weeks, and each team gave up 30 or more in the last game. So we could have a shootout on our hands on this warm October night. They bring in Ron Jaworski and John Gruden. You know, we all have been watching the Dolphins for a long time. And for the first time, maybe in a generation, we're legitimately excited about what the Dolphins do when they have the ball on offense. Why? Well, it all starts with their quarterback, Chad Henney. I think he's the best prospect they've had since Dan Marino. He's got experience. He's well-trained. He can make all the throws, and he's tough. They also went out and acquired one of the most feared receivers in all of football. Six foot four, 230 pound Brandon Marshall. Even you can complete passes to this guy, Jaws. I hope so. But what I like about Miami the most is they can run the football. They have two great backs, Ronnie Brown and Ricky Williams. And if they get in a shootout tonight with the New England Patriots, they have the firepower to outscore. Yeah, and they have the defense to go against, too. The Patriots defense showing some cracks. We're going to get into that in a couple of minutes, but I want to come back to what Tom Brady Brady told us when we met with him last night, Ron. He said, you know what? Maybe it's different from early in my career. Maybe I can't rely on the defense. We have to outscore guys. If so, they've got the people. What do you expect the Pats to do tonight? Yeah, Tom does have the people. He's got every dimension of quarterback desires. The speed of Randy Moss down the field, the possession receiver in Wes Welker. Three very unique tight ends with a skill set that separates them all. And oh, by the way, they ran the ball for 200 yards last week behind a very good offensive line. So tonight, what I think you're going to see is a high volume offense from Tom Brady and the Patriots. They love that no huddle offense, the up tempo, and they like that no back in the backfield, five wide receiver look, get the ball out quick. But the key tonight for the Patriots, a lot of offense. They want to get up in the 70s number of plays run. Well, it all centers around Brady. Speaking of numbers, he goes tonight for win number 100. As we go into the Verizon Red Zone, we see a lot of them have come in the AFC East, a career record of 40 and 11. But note, of those 11 losses, five have come here in South Florida. It'll all happen in high definition. And you'll see our telecast presented in HD by Verizon. Be right back to look at the defenses on the field tonight. There's the man who's won three Super Bowls in that four-year stretch. And Bill Belichick's Patriots have won 59 games in the last five years. But to many, they are rebuilding, especially on the defensive side. Welcome back to Miami time now for tonight's winning look presented by J.C. Penny to win against the Patriots. You need to throw the ball right now because, Ron, you start to talk about this group, the corners, the four corners on the field tonight in their first, second, or third year. They're very young. Yeah, and they are really unsettled in that secondary. They've given up seven touchdown passes through three games, and Bill Belichick is looking for the right combination. Hasn't found it yet. Here you'll see the Jets exploit with a slant and go Darius Butler. You can't make it this easy on your quarterback and wide receiver. And then what the Jets did, they came out a little bunch look. They want to create some down out in the defensive secondary's mind. You'll see Devin McCourtney right there just looked with his back to the backfield. My goodness, that's easy. Then you'll see Brandon Marshall, the beast as we like to call him. You play off, and this is last year when he was with the Broncos against the Patriots. You play off, he catches it, sticks the foot in the ground, touchdown. Okay, you want to get pressure, bump and run in your face? Well, he's big, he's strong, and he has great hands. Now, as you spin this forward to tonight, the secondary is struggling right now for the Patriots. So the key will be pass, rush, pressure. Brandon's fired up. Whoa. So is Randy Moss on the other side. That's a pretty good matchup, too. When the Patriots have the ball, Randy Moss will be checked by a second-year corner who's getting a lot of attention now, Vontae Davis. Well, Randy Moss, let's not kid ourselves. He's a superstar. And Vontae Davis was brought here to stop Randy Moss. Last year, these two guys went at it. Take a look at Randy Moss going down the field one-on-one -on -one with Vontae Davis. You can't coach that. Randy Ooh. Moss still the best deep ball receiver ever. And when you put Randy in short motion on a shallow cross with the game on the line, Brady gets a perfect ball off to the races. How about that stiff arm? The thing I like about Vontae Davis is he doesn't quit. He comes right back at you. He's not afraid, and he has the athletic ability to challenge Moss, go up, and make big-time plays. He's the only guy that has ever intercepted Tom Brady twice in two different games 
in the same season. It's going to be a heck of a welterweight fight. Vontae Davis against Randy Moss. He's got to play great for the Dolphins to win. Well, the guys have given you something to look for. It could be a little bit of an aerial shootout here in South Florida tonight. So who better to toss the coin to start tonight? Flanked by the Marx Brothers, the man who made them famous, Dan Marino. We have a Marino Monday night memory and then kick off next from Miami. in South Beach tonight. Ready? Come on and get ready. I mean, really ready. Are you ready for the football? A Monday night party. This is great and I'm ready. Let's get this picture started. Let's paint this town and do it up right. All my ratty friends are here on Monday night. The Patriots' annual visit down here to South Florida Sun Life Stadium. Actually, been the Dolphins' home for nearly a quarter century now. Week four wrapping up with New England and Miami. On Monday Night Football, our weather here in South Florida is always a story. You wonder how humid it's going to be. Patriots catch a break because it's a night game. Humidity of 58 percent with the temperature 80, so it certainly will be a factor in the game. And no rain in the forecast, which is also odd on this early October night here in Miami. New England coming off a very strong performance, beating Buffalo 38 to 30. Chad Henney and the Dolphins lost to the Jets here on Sunday night, eight days ago, 31-23 in that one. They fell behind 14 to nothing and had to open it up and opened it up pretty well. Yeah, Chad Henney uh, probably had his best game as a pro throwing for 362 yards, a couple of touchdowns. But it was the, the comfortable look that he had as a quarterback. You know, he's always been kind of asked to hand the ball off to Ronnie Brown and Ricky Williams, but he was asked to go out and try to win a game. And he responded in a very positive way. Five of the last six years, these teams have split their annual combo of games. New England's won the toss, deferred to the second half, so Miami will receive Stephen Gostowski's kickoff. Nolan Carroll's back deep, and it has been a long time since the Dolphins have had a home kickoff return for touchdown. 1970, the last time at home. Miami's taken one back all the way. Off we go from Miami. This one's not going anywhere. It's out of the end zone. Good kick by Gostowski. Michigan quarterbacks both ways. Tom Brady coming up when the Patriots get the ball, but now Chad Henney, who essentially is through one full season. John, he's 9-7 and seven in his 16 starts. This is his 17th start. I know it's his third year, but it's about one full year as a starter. We're starting to see that growth you expect about this time. And he's a confident leader, and the Miami Dolphin players are very impressed with that. He understands this offense, and there's a lot to understand. Dan Henning does as much as any offensive coordinator in the league. This kid can really throw it. Ronnie Brown is his running back to get us going. Play action. They've taken downfield shots early on this year. This one is Brown. It's a dozen yards. First down. Rob Ninkovich sends him to the sideline. So Henny has one of the second and third all-time leading rushers in Dolphin history. Ricky Williams and Ronnie Brown. The tight end Fasano. And we mentioned Brandon Marshall at the top. Devon Best does a terrific job as a slot receiver. Up front, number one overall pick a couple of years ago, Jake Long has been to the Pro Bowl his first two years. Incognito, Berger, McQuiston inside. McQuiston starts for the injured rookie, John Jerry, missing his second game tonight. Brian Hartline, the other receiver, gets three yards as Devin McCourty tackles it for the New England defense. You know, I guess the best-known defensive player over here is Vince Wolford. He's the one guy who's been around for a while. Gerard Warren, the former number three overall pick, also out there. Who rushes the pass? That's the question. A couple of rookies starting in linebacker, former Gators, Jermaine Cunningham and Brandon Spikes 
with Mayo and Ninkovic. And in the secondary, that youth, Kyle Arrington, undrafted his second year. McCourty, the first-round pick out of Rutgers. So three rookies starting for the Patriots here tonight. First run, a draw with Brown. And he'll get it up to the 34-yard line. And you mentioned Vince Wilfork. Already Bill Belichick has adjusted his front. Mike Wright has opened this game at nose, and Vince Wilfork plays the first couple plays at defensive end over on Vernon Carey. The Dolphins have three new inside players. Center, Berger, incognito at left guard, McQuiston at right guard. Look for the Patriots to challenge the inside three of the Dolphins. Third and three, a lot of time for Henny. First down, Fasano working in the middle of the field. Takes it to the 40, gain of 20. You'll see number 99, John just spoke about him. Mike Wright drop out from a defensive line position and drop into pass coverage. You'll see Henny as he sets up in the pocket. There's Wright dropping back, but look at Fasano sit down in the hole, and Henny found him very easily, read the zone perfectly. Any three for three thus far. From behind, almost knocked out, and he is brought down. Tully Banta Kane brought the pressure, slapped at the ball, and eventually the sack is a loss of five. That's what you want to see from Tully Banta Kane, who led the Patriots last year in sacks. And for him to edge Jake Long and get a big one right there is huge for New England. They need Tully Banta Kane to regain that form he had last season. Watch him coming off the ball here. Working on Jake Long, just relentless around the corner. He does a nice job. One of those plays where Henny could have helped Jake Long by stepping up a bit. Brandon Marshall comes out of the backfield. They go the other way with Ronnie Brown. Got the penalty, the sack yardage back, I should say, to the 36. Berger was out there, made a nice block for Miami. Yeah, you'll see a nice screen right here. One man screen to get Ronnie Brown out in front of behind Berger, and Berger gets a nice kick out block and takes it up the field. Ronnie ba Brown back after he broke his right foot. Game nine of the season. We were here for a Monday nighter last year. There's the Wildcat. Didn't take long. John's excited again. This is the team that. The Dolphins unveiled the Wildcat against a couple of years ago. Brown chooses to keep it. And Merriweather and the rookie Jermaine Cunningham combined to shut it down. Fourth down. Well, that's what you need to do when you find out it's the Wildcat. You have to bring pressure most of the time off of both edges. And here Merriweather's quick to support. He's unblocked. And that's been the demise this season of the Wildcat. Defenses have recognized it. And they've been able to get to some automatic defenses. And Miami's got to adjust or table that for a while. Yeah, I'll take that Wildcat to the Miami Zoo. Brandon Fields got a lot of hang time on this. Going back to catch it. And Muffet is Welker. Wes able to get his hands on it. And let's see if he did recover. He also got bent awkwardly there. It is Patriots ball back at the 10-yard line. So Welker, who made his name in college, has a great punt returner, goes back and muffs that one, but able to get on it at the 10, and the Patriots take over from there. Scoreless, Patriots able to keep it after Wes Welker muffed that punt, and now Tom Brady takes over, going for win number 100 in his career as a starting quarterback in his 131st start. See the numbers, eight touchdowns, two picks. Just kind of feels like the Tom Brady we got used to seeing pre-knee injury. He looks very comfortable and confident at the start this year. Yeah, Mike, I totally agree with you. In fact, talking to Tom last night, he talked about his comfort level right now. He loves this offense and his design and the weapons. Ben Jarvis Green Ellis is the top running back for the Pats tonight. He'll gain about six yards from the 27-yard line. Maroney traded, Falk injured, Fred Taylor out tonight. So Ben Jarvis Green Ellis and Sammy Morris will be the backs. Aaron Hernandez, rookie tight end out of Florida, big impact on this game and team with Moss and Welker 
the standard bearers. As for up front, Logan Mankin still out with a contract dispute. Dan Connolly has filled in nicely. And over the right tackle, Sebastian Bolmer is in for the injured Nick Casual. Out again tonight with a back injury. And Tom Brady uh, in this empty formation, no backs in the backfield. They've used this 25 times this year more than any team in the league. Brady sends out five. The Dolphins rushed only two. And the pass is incomplete, intended for Brandon Tate. Ron, this is something you're highlighting on this game. The Patriots with no backs. Yeah, Tom Brady loves it. He loves to make quick decisions, get the ball out of his hand. And when you go empty, you better have a quarterback that understands that. His teams, they will either blitz it or play coverage. You saw right there the Dolphins chose coverage. But look at this. Brady with this empty backfield. Wow, 19 to 24. One touchdown, no interception. Tom, very comfortable out of the empty set. The back with him now is Danny Woodhead, the former Jet. Third and four. Brady flushed. Wake hit him. And the pass was knocked down. <laughs> it's fourth down. Cameron Wake was everywhere. Well, this is play. one of my favorite guys in the league. Take a look at the effort of Cameron Wake coming off the edge here on Sebastian Bulmer. He's being blocked. He stays alive. He stays after Brady and knocks him down and forces an incomplete pass. Cameron Wake came from no place. He was in Canada for two years. This is a great story, and he's clearly the best pass rusher the Dolphins have. Rookie punter Zoltan Mesco out of Michigan. Devon Bess to receive. Booming kick. 63 yards. Bess has room. And he's brought down at the 36-yard line. Cameron Wake, who mentioned former CFL Defensive Player of the Year, second year Dolphin with an impact. <laughs> well, the Dolphins, Patriots joining the rest of the NFL and its players supporting October's National Breast Cancer Awareness Month across the league. All the pink that you saw yesterday continuing on through the month. You can learn more about the NFL's A Crucial Catch Breast Cancer Awareness Campaign. Visit NFL.com slash pink. To salute the NFL for uh, putting its power behind a most worthy attention getter. Any first down, Devon Bess underneath keeps his feet and into Patriots territory. Tackled by Mayo at the 43, a gain of 21. Yeah, everybody talks about Wes Welker and rightfully so, but this Devon Bess is outstanding in his own right. Watch how quick he is on the under route. Good throw, but watch him get up the field after the catch. Devon Bess is one of the most unheralded slot receivers in all of football. Hard to tackle after the catch. Ricky Williams, the back. Got a good block from McQuiston. Got a first down, gain of 10 at age 33. He keeps going. Ricky Williams, who won the Heisman, it feels like a lifetime ago in 98. Drafted by the Saints when Ditka traded his whole draft to get him. He uh, had those great, unbelievable years here in Miami where they used him as much as any back had been used over the last decade. And came back and had over 1,000 yards last season. Still a very patient runner. He set up that block by McQuiston with the patience. Williams toss. 26 good first down game right now Miami's doing whatever they want they are pounding New England right now Mike Wright as we said earlier playing the nose position they're just running away from Vince Wilfork Wilfork is lining up on the right side of the Dolphins they're running left and having success with Ricky Williams who can still get it done well, why wouldn't you run left they go Jake Long at left tackle a dominant football player but the Patriots must do a better job of setting the edge Again, Williams. They're close to the first down. Mayo, Arrington coming through. He's the one difference maker they have up front. Wilford. Well, Vince Wilford, clearly the best run defender the Patriots have. Vernon carries the right tackle of the Miami Dolphins. And that's where Wilford is. So Miami's going to run left. We're going to run away from Wilford. And we're going to give the ball to the 230 pound workhorse, Ricky Williams until New England stops it. Why would you run into Vince Wilfork when you don't have to? 
I did pick up a first down. Dolphins go with two tight ends here. Mickey Schuler, son of the former Jets tight end, checked in. Play and the sub came in a little bit late. And he burns his first timeout halfway through the first, and the Dolphins drive it. Dean Pease was the defensive coordinator for New England last year. He's moved on now to Baltimore. Make no mistake, that's the defensive coordinator of the New England Patriots. There's no coordinator listed by title, but Bill Belichick is handling everything. He's leading the defense in the meetings. Tony Sperano, the Dolphins head coach, the uh, former offensive line coach with Bill Parcells in Dallas. That's the common tie that binds here tonight. These two guys off the Parcells tree going head to head. Miami called timeout. Ricky Williams back for first and ten. And Henny back to the air. It's another one. It's Ricky. Three yards shy of the first down, but a gain of about seven. What you're seeing is the maturation of Chad Henny. The play was designed to get a corner route. It wasn't there. He was patient downfield, checked it down in the flat, make a positive play. You'll see it right here. Off the play action, you'll see the deep routes of the corner. Not there. Check it out in the flat. Move the chains right now. Henny, six for six. Going to the right people. Ronnie Brown now checks in, bounces it to the outside. Merriweather couldn't tackle him. It's a first down, but we have our first marker of the night. We have Walt Coleman as our referee. Holding, number 68, offense. 10 yard penalty, still second down. Richie Incognito called there. You mentioned the play action passing game and what that has done to this young Patriots back seven here over the first three games, Ron. Yeah, play action's all about disorienting the defense. And you can see against the Patriots, the play action's been very successful. 13 of 16, 100, 192 yards. It really does. When you have secondary people have a tendency to look in the backfield, a tendency not to understand route combinations, you're going to get out of position. That's what has happened so far for this Patriots secondary and their linebackers included in that. Ronnie Brown got a good block from the fullback. Polite takes it back into the red zone at the 19-yard line. Brandon Spikes, the rookie linebacker, one of the men on the tackle. But success on first down. That's the key for the New England Patriots defense. They have got to stop Miami on first down. If New England is in a lot of second and fours and second and threes, which they have been on this drive, they're going to be very vulnerable to the play action pass. Patriots one drive, three and out. See if the Dolphins can get anything out of having the ball here for most of the quarter. And he's throw, Best catches it in front of the safety chum to the end zone. And in. Touchdown, Miami. a little option route breaks to the outside he dives for the front side pylon that's a guy we've talked about all week Jaws the yep. best can really run routes he's sure handed quarterback friendly and excellent after the catch so John he defines it quickly for the quarterback that's what quarterback friendly means you saw Henny look over there he knew exactly what he had when the Von Bess came out, Von Bess came out of his break I think Mr. Sperano's fired up 7-0 Devon Best really made a name for himself in his three years when he was at Hawaii. June Jones, former NFL coach, a terrific job with the passing offense there. Best thrived in that system and has really found a home here in Miami. Catches the touchdown. And this New England defense a little confused and a little gassed after that uh, opening first and second drive. The second one paying off of the touchdown. Brandon Tate back to take it back for the Pats. Took one back for a touchdown against Cincinnati, but meets Bobby Carpenter at the 23-yard line. Brady was under pressure in that opening drive. He's got some work to do, a deficit for the Pats. Well, uh, one of the great defensive minds of his generation, Bill Belichick in there, trying to get his guys on the same page. Well, it's maximum protection. 
Miami has Marshall at the bottom of the screen. He's doubled, so we're going to work up top. And they just take Brian Hartline and clear him out. And clearly, Patrick Chung, number 25, and James Sanders have Bess doubled in and out. They blow the coverage. And if you do that, you're going to see Coach Belichick a lot in your meeting rooms. And he won't be happy. New England takes over at the 24. Three and out first drop. Brady's pass complete to Brandon Tate. Eighth catch of the year for the second year man out of North Carolina against Carlos Dansby in this Miami defense. Let's introduce you to these guys. Not as well known as pass defenses for the Dolphins. Lankford Soliai is playing the nose tonight because Randy Starks moves to the right end. Their first round pick, Jared Odrick's out again. Cole Amici, a rookie linebacker. Dansby, Cameron Wake, impact already. Vontae Davis will see Moss a lot tonight. Jason Allen gave up big plays to Braylon Edwards last week. And Jarvis Green Ellis runs to the 38 yard line. A little bit of background on Green Ellis. We mentioned earlier that Kevin Falk hurt his knee out for the season. Fred Taylor's out tonight because of the toe. They traded Lawrence Maroney to Denver, and all of a sudden, because of the attrition, this guy, who spent his first two years at Indiana, last two years at Ole Miss, becomes the number one back and did a pretty good job in that role last week against Buffalo. Here's a three tight end look that John told us about in countdown. It gives Brady time to come downfield to Aaron Hernandez, the rookie, to the 26 yard line. Penalty marker down back by the quarterback. Holding number 72. Johnson. Erasing a 36 yard gain. Well, it's on the right tackle. Sebastian Vollmer is on the opposite side of the screen. Brady's got all day. They max protected this play action pass. See if you can see Vollmer there. I didn't see much on the right side. Yeah, this is their shot play, John. You know, when they go max protection, they're going to look to Moss deep down the field, but that created a big void for Hernandez. I think they may have the number wrong. I think it was right nice. on yeah. Wake. Yeah, tackling Cameron Wake is making his presence felt. There he is, bottom of the screen. Coming at Brady, almost got him again. Tate with the catch, shy of the 35. Here's the guy you folks highlighted earlier. Yeah, Cameron Wake is really cranking it up right now. You know, you, you don't have Joey Porter. You don't have Jason Taylor. Where's the pressure come from? Look at this guy in that four-point stance, much like Jason Taylor, leapfrogging into the backfield. He explodes off the football, and for a guy that size, can really dip that shoulder and corner around an offensive tackle. Cameron Wade was having an impact early in this game. Brady comes back this way to Rob Gronkowski, eluded one tackle, coming off the line. Kendall Lankford makes the tackle, and the Patriots will have to punt again. You know, sometimes it's not about scheme, it's not about design, it's about energy, and right now the Miami Dolphins have great energy. They are flying around the football field. Best goes back. Great 60 yard kick by Zoltan Mesco. First time around. Nowhere near as good. It was 40 yards. Best took it on the run and brought it back to the 33 yard line. Just a net of 29 on that kick. Next Monday night, Brett Favre returns to the place where he briefly called home. The Jets, where Mark Sanchez has stepped in. The leaders of this division, Jets, Vikings, next Monday night, 8.30 Eastern time. And we know it's been a struggle for Favre and the Vikings, who were off yesterday. But look at Favre's passer ranking, way down there with those six picks. Meantime, Sanchez, since we left him that opening Monday night against Baltimore, really hit not only hit it well but did it against three division opponents too and he gets some help uh, Santonio Holmes be coming back another explosive dimension the 33 Chad Henney's pass is incomplete he, he tends to do that once a quarter as one of those passes that doesn't look too good you know I'm thinking back to the Monday night game we had with the Jets and the Dolphins and last week the young quarterbacks in this division like Sanchez 
Ron, where do you see Henny as he's now making that development step? Mike, he gets better every single week. You know, he learned behind Chad Pennington. And I love a quarterback learn the old-fashioned way. When you ha finally have to go on the field, you're now ready to play. Henny was a late second-round pick out of Michigan in 2008. Ronnie Brown, met by Vince Wolfork, doesn't go anywhere. And it's a loss of a yard. Remember that 2008 season, Pennington was acquired in the preseason to just kind of get somebody in here to be the quarterback. Henny got to learn by watching Pennington, and then now the next step was the transition after Chad Pennington got hurt. Chad Henny took over last year and has gone just anything but just straightforward. That's a good offense for him. It's a balanced offense, and he spends a lot of time under the center. He's in the shotgun less than any quarterback in the league. He's comfortable right here underneath. The third and 11. And time. Good job by the line. Underneath again, Bess. Another first down. He has become a third down pickup machine. Quarterback friendly, but it starts with the pass protection. No one is near Chad Henney on this play. As he drops back, you'll see no one, no in the wide open lane to throw the football into. Let the defense expand, then come back underneath of Devon Best. And I talk about quarterback friendly. There you go. Settle down. Give the quarterback a nice target to throw to. Make and then the take tackle. it up the field. Got to make the tackle. Play action with Ricky Williams. Looking downfield for Marshall, and it's intercepted. Good job by Rob Ninkovich, who smelled that out. And the linebacker from Purdue picks off Henny. That's great preparation by the Patriot defense. They've seen this motion. They've seen this action. They've seen this play action pass. But take a look at Ninkovich. He's going to be over here on the right side, dropping into coverage. Take a look at his outside linebacker off the screen. But he read it all the way and made an excellent play on the ball. But that's a pattern that I'm sure the Patriots worked in practice all week. And Ninkovich is an outside linebacker, did an excellent job running vertical with a wide receiver there. First career interception for Ninkovich. Third drive for the Patriots. And Jarvis Green Ellis cut it up. Got about five yards. Michael Belichick told us about this kid out of New Orleans, St. Augustine High School. When we asked about Greenhouse, he always seems to push the pile forward. He's not a wow guy, not a speed guy, but he gets what's blocked and then maybe a yard or two more. Good back for this offense. Now you would call this a Bill Belichick type player. One of those quiet guys just goes about his business and does things the right way. Undrafted free agent. Ellis running to the right. Algie Crumpler held on to the block. And there goes Green Ellis to get to the first down. What I love about the Patriots is the tempo of their offense. Brady gets up to the line with time to take care of all those veteran things. Well, there's an urgency in the way they substitute. These guys come on and off quickly. There's an urgency in which Brady gets the plays called in the huddle. And there's an urgency in which they break the huddle. But Tom Brady will snap the ball inside of five seconds more than any quarterback in football. They play with a great tempo. First time in Dolphin territory. He'll sneak one more play in. Coming from the back is Jeremiah Bell. They got it to Aaron Hernandez, who cannot get back to the line of scrimmage. They ran that little tight end around last week and handed it to Hernandez. It's time to try to just shovel it out to him. They lose yards as the quarter comes to an end. Miami dominates the first, leading 7 0 on Monday Night Football. Watch Tom Brady on Monday Night Football go for a little bit of history, going for 100 wins in his 131st start. Montana took 139. He's the standard. Bradshaw, Favre, Manning, none of them will equal Brady's quick route to 100 as long as Tom gets that win in the next eight games. He's sitting on 99 right now. Hey, guys, you think about September 10th. At Brady, remember, that was the day he had the car accident on the way to work. Thankfully, everything was okay with that. He drove back home with a four-year, $72 million deal. Yet, as he told us last night, he still has a chip on his shoulder. Oh, I love being around Tom Brady. Here's a guy that's accomplished about everything you'd want to accomplish as a quarterback, and he still plays angry. 
he does carry that chip on his shoulder from being a sixth round draft choice. Pass to Aaron Hernandez to start the quarter. Gets it close to the 40 yard line. Cameron Wake with the 10. I'm the 48 million bucks for knocking chip off my shoulder. <laughs> well, <laughs> Miss Wagner, I can sum up Tom Brady. I, if there's one guy in the world I wish I could be, it'd be him. I mean, he has it all. <laughs> He's got everything you want in a superstar quarterback. He can make all the throws. He's smart, hardest worker in the program. He's one of the guys. This guy is a crunch time performer, and when he gets the ball, he wants to score every time he has it, and he wants to complete every ball. He's a perfectionist. Got a third and short here. Dan Connolly's going to lead the way from the fullback spot, and Green Ellis can't get there. Good penetration by Kendall Lankford. It's fourth down. Very much in the Bill Belichick profile to go for it on fourth down, and they will. And Kendall the Dolphins, Lankford. Excuse me, Ron. The Dolphins have a lot of injuries in this defensive line. You know, Tony McDaniel suspended for this game. Philip Merlin got hurt in preseason. Their first round draft pick, Jared Odrick, is out. So Bill Belichick clearly. Feels like he has the advantage, and we all know Bill Belichick loves going for it in these situations. Brady keeping and keeps the legs driving. Looks like he's got the first down close to the 38. He does. And that was a concern of Coach Tony Sperano coming in here tonight. They are very light at the defensive line position, and they're just going to surge right behind their right guard, Stephen Neal, Dan Cope in the center. They let Tom Brady get it done with his legs. That sneak wedge and Cope with an outstanding block. Number 37, Green Ellis. Runs for two, Bobby Carpenter. Adam stopped, but there is what we talked about three more as he keeps the legs grinding. You see the Patriots right now from a scheme standpoint have calmed things down. They came out early. They opened it up. They spread it out with empty. It wasn't working. There was pressure on Tom Brady. Is he spin this forward? What they want to do is calm things down. Then they'll get back to opening up and try to get the big plays, the explosive plays. Nothing to Welker or Moss yet. Green Ellis carries. Yard shy of the first down. Remember, the Dolphins have a new defensive coordinator here, Mike Nolan. And Mike Nolan was in Denver last year, did some good things against Tom Brady and the Patriot offense, but the one thing the Dolphins want to eliminate this year is the big plays. They gave up 57 completions last year, 20 yards or more. Clearly, they're almost daring New England to run the football, Josh. You see Mike is with the Niners as the head coach, defensive coordinator, Denver last year. Much respected defensive mind in the league. Dan Connolly, the lineman, blocks for Green Ellis, who has the first down at the 26-yard line. You got to like Ben Jarvis, Green Ellis. I mean, this guy's carried the ball I don't know how many times, but they tell me he's never fumbled. And he's waited his whole life for this opportunity. Just a hard run right off the left side, and he really gets it done after contact. He makes a lot of hidden yardage, just Ben Jarvis, Green Ellis. Good finish. Inflicted the pain on Jeremiah Bell, the safety on that trip. Bell is out. Tyrone Culver comes in at safety here for the Dolphins. Now Sammy Mars, as Green Ellis gets a break. Cameron Wake. And Vontae Davis chases him to the sideline. And Vontae Davis does an outstanding job from his cornerback position, diagnosing the play. Randy Moss does not get the block on him, and he knifes through. You'll see Randy Moss, number 81, going for the block and does not make the block. And Vontae Davis, woof. I mean, he's like a missile coming in there. I don't know what if I've play. seen a Patriots play in the last five years without Randy Moss and Welker. Not having a catch for this long. Or even a target. We haven't seen it really thrown to them much. Let's play 10 of the drive. You should play 11, I beg your pardon. And it's Woodhead running. Danny takes it inside the 20 to the 19 yard line. Well, Vontae Davis is hanging in there against Randy Moss so far. They're mixing up coverages. He's trying to be physical with them. He's been rotating to him. He's had some help over the top. But Vontae Davis has played Randy Moss before. He knows he can run with him. So far, the young guy's been pretty sharp. I like this guy a lot. 
Five minutes through the quarter, third down on this long drive. Brady will burn a timeout. First sustained drive for the Patriots. We'll see what they do on 32. Mike Tirico, John Gruden, Ron Jaworski in Miami. Third and two. In this drive, it's taken six and a half minutes for Brady in the pass. Sammy Mars, the back, the throw is to Hernandez, the rookie tight end. Inside the 10, it's first and goal for the pass. You know, this guy, Hernandez, is the youngest player in the National Football League. And for him to line up here and run a sharp slant against a good corner like Sean Smith, this guy has rare pass receiving skills. That's impressive. John, he came into this game through the first three games at more receiving yards than any tight end through three games in the history of the NFL. He is an outstanding receiving tight end. I don't think he's a tight end. I think <laughs> he's just an all-around receiver. Uh, first and goal, the pressure comes. Cameron Wake again. Cameron Wake is explosive off the football. You, you'll see him right here. No chance for Volmer. Volmer peaked to the inside. By the time he came back out, Wake was by him, putting the hit on Tom Brady. That was no a full blitz chance. that time, and it fooled Tom Brady. Volmer blocked down to block the blitz, and Wake was not accounted for. Lost only receiver bottom of the screen. A run with Sammy Morris. Jeremiah Bell helps with the tackle. Third and goal from the 12. Cameron Wake can explode off the football. This is what you're seeing out of him tonight. Look at the effort. Just continues to work hard. You see the burst. You see the dip of the shoulder. This is after once again chasing the play from behind. Here just putting the lick on Tom Brady. Number 91, Cameron Wake, all over the field, wreaking havoc. He's standing up in the middle linebacker spot here. Brady throws underneath to Welker as Bell stops him along with Chris Clemens. And on fourth down, a field goal attempt coming for New England. Well, you can see what Mike Nolan, defensive coordinator of the Dolphins, has in mind for Tom Brady in these no-back, wide-open passing sets. He's going to rush three guys. He's already rushed two. He's playing maximum zone coverages. And they're going to force Tom Brady to work underneath. Good job with that long drive. A couple of long attempts and misses. Rookie holder, Hunter Zoltan Mesco. That snap, good job by Mesco. Jake Ingram, the second year snapper out of Hawaii with a bad snap. Well done by Mesco. 16 plays and a field goal in large part as Cameron Wake helps keep him out of the end zone. 16 plays and a field goal. They kept it for nine minutes and 11 seconds and the Rob Ninkovich interception got the ball back to the Pats. Place where New England has traditionally struggled. Dolphins always seem to play the Patriots well down here in South Florida. As good as Bill Belichick has been, he's only four and six as a Patriots head coach down here in South Florida, Mike. Kostowski kicks to Nolan Carroll. He'll come down shy of the 20 yard line. Devin McCourty. The rookie cornerback leading the charge. Nikovich slow to get up. And we'll get Chad Henney back on the field. Threw it well early on. Intercepted last drive. We'll see how he responds after this. Well, both of these starting quarterbacks have maize and blue in common. Tom Brady, a 20-5 and five record as a starter. Remember, Drew Henson was there, and Brady had to emerge past Henson to win the position. Chad Henney started from his very first game as a freshman out of Pennsylvania. He set some very strong Michigan marks because of all the time he played. In all, throwing for 9,715 yards. 
both men have their name in the Michigan record book. I don't think either one of these guys, Brady or Henny, could start at Michigan today in this <laughs> offensive line. This Denard Robinson's <laughs> different, man. Different offense. From the 21, here is Henny. This pass is uh, incomplete. Now, Michigan, for all its great football, they really didn't have a starting quarterback in the NFL out of Michigan until Jim Harbaugh started in the late 80s. And now these guys are uh, carrying the Mason Blue flag in the NFL. See their numbers so far tonight. You had a Michigan quarterback, Brian Greasy. Get Elvis Gerback, Todd Collins, who played last night when Cutler got hurt. Well, Henny just missed a dig route, but he's got a hit. Now he's got to start heating it up a little bit. He missed a couple that he got to complete. Ronnie Brown carries the shot at 25, tackled by Ninkovich. The Miami Dolphins love to run that play out of two backs. It's a power play, and they like to run it to the right behind their pulling guard, Richie Incognito. This is a staple in the Dan Henning offense. Take a look at this left guard, Richie Incognito. He's going to be pulling at the point of attack. This guy, Incognito, the Dolphins wanted to add toughness, and they did with this guy. He is arguably the meanest guy in the league, Joe. <laughs> Let me tell you. I agree with you. <laughs> Third and six. Patriots bring five. And Henny throws. Complete another third down picked up for a first down to Devon Best. Yeah, Chad Henney, real poise in the pocket. You'll see bodies flying around him, and he steps up in the pocket. This is what a quarterback has to do. Know where the pressure's coming from. He steps up and delivers down the field to Best. And the eyes of the quarterback, so critical. First, he looks down the field, steps up, and maintains that focus and vision on the receiver and throws a strike to Best. It helps when Devon Best runs a route like that. Devon Best is off to a great start tonight. Third time he's caught one for a first down. What a hit on Best by Brandon Merriweather. Good thing he held on too. That may have been going backwards. Wow. He gets stroked. Well, Merriweather's an interesting guy. He reads it the whole way. That's impressive. And they need Merriweather to return to his Pro Bowl form. He was benched for a couple games earlier this season. He can hit you. He can run. He's a versatile safety. Welcome back to Miami, Brandon Merriweather. Loss of three was officially credited as a pass, not a run. And Wolford to attack Ronnie Brown with a gain of a couple of yards. We mentioned the offensive coordinator, Dan Henning, who's been a veteran in the National Football League, was a head coach at Boston College. 31 seasons in the league and always tight ends. Wherever Dan Henning has been, it's a tight end based offense. But he's a guy who's great, you think, for Chad Henning at this stage of his career. No question. This guy's done it. For a long time and they can line up in empty backs single backs two back sets they have a litany of audibles and he's very good with young quarterbacks he played the position himself asks a lot of his quarterback and henny has been able to handle it timeout taken by Bill Belichick so we'll step out with four and a half left in the half 7-3 Miami downtown Miami it's the home of the heat that's LeBron's new hangout. Miami Heat play their first preseason game tomorrow night. You'll see LeBron and D. Wade and Chris Bosh, the new look Heat that everybody's excited about. A lot coming up this winter and spring on ESPN. Third and ten out of the timeout. Last three third downs have been completions for the first down to Devon Bess. Henny hit as he throws. Incomplete for Hartline. The flag comes on the rookie Devin McCourty. And what a hit put on Chad Henney. He had the courage to hang in the pocket. Pass interference, number 32. Defense. Ball placed at the spot of the foul. Once First step. Once again, young defender, McCourty, the rookie. Third down and long. Take a look at Brian Hartline driving off on a double move. They're going to call that. They like McCourty. But he's had some pass interference problems. That's a big one. Pretty tough call, though, John. That ball was back to the inside. You know, the receiver kind of <laughs> leaned back in the, to him. Hartline trying to make the catch. Roberto Wallace in the game for the Dolphins for the first time. And movement up front. First 
Ball start, 79. Offense, five-yard penalty, field first down. Talk about the youth in that Patriots secondary. There it is in terms of the guys who are in the corners and safeties. Yeah, and they've really invested not only in the draft picks, the time. They've spent a lot of time with these young guys. Nobody works harder than Bill Belichick and his Patriot team. But these young guys have got to step up quick because they're in a line of fire in this league every week. And two of them, Merriweather and Butler, have been benched as starters over the last two weeks. And he passes to Bess. He took the penalty yard plus two, a gain of seven for Devon. Yeah. This Devon Bess is really off to a great start. He can run all the routes and he's fearless inside. He's very good after the catch. He's sudden and he's quick. And on third down, nobody's been more productive in this league than Devon Bess. Look how quick, quick he is in and out of breaks. And he snatches it with his hands. This is really an unheralded receiver off to a great start once again tonight. Toss to Ricky Williams. Good. Cut back by Ricky. Oh, and he's tripped up. Almost getting all the way home. Kyle Arrington preventing a Ricky Williams touchdown. Boy, we used to call this a bunch crunch. And here it is to the right side. There's a bunch of guys over there. Crunch blocked into the inside. Ricky Williams can pick and slide just like he used to at the days in Texas. If they get Ricky going again, Jaws, with Ronnie in this running game, there's a lot of good things in store for these Dolphins. Fans. Well, on your bunch, John, you said he got to be able to block. And it certainly was a great job by Brandon Marshall on Gerard Warren, sealing to the inside. That was the crunch block. Play action for Henny. Throw is underneath, intercepted again by Ninkovich. For the second time in as many drives, good Miami movement down the field, and Ninkovich, who had never had an interception in his NFL career, has two in as many drives. Just a couple bad decisions tonight by the quarterback, Chad Henney. This one, you see it right here. We got Ninkovich as a linebacker spot, walked out over Brandon Marshall. Off the play action, Chad Henney comes out. Trying to get to Polite in the flat, just not there. Throw the ball away if you don't have it downfield. He actually got caught a little bit flat-footed on the throw. The ball hangs. Ninkovich comes underneath. There's actually Patrick Cobbs out in the flat. We got to give Ninkovich some credit. The decision, not a great decision, but you see an outside linebacker get two interceptions. Well, if That's he would, if he would have done this when he was with the Dolphins, he'd still be here. Yeah. We have four games and one game back in 07 and 08. He would have still been here. That's right. Played with the Patriots all last year. First two career picks. Brady and the Pats get going. Complete to Welker for five. Sports Center right now, Trey Wingo. Michael, thank you. The Eagles are calling the injury to quarterback Michael Vick. Something to do with his rib cartilage. And his status is uncertain for next Sunday night's game in San Francisco. Kevin Cobb will get the start if Vic can't go. And for the sixth time in the last eight matches, the Europeans have their hands on the Ryder Cup. Despite a comeback by the U.S., Graham McDowell closed out Hunter Mahan to win it by a point. All right, thank you, Trey. Welker, the catch, first down for New England across the 35. We're going to hit the two-minute warning with no passes caught by Randy Moss, none by Brandon Marshall. For the focal points here, see if they get one snap in before the two. No. Oh, yeah, they're sitting on two, and they, they get it to Hernandez to the 41-yard line. So they end up getting a quick five yards there. Miami sideline unhappy. The clock hit two minutes, and they let the snap go. Brady and the Pats, a little frustrated on offense, but within four and driving at the two-minute warning. Didn't you guys say it was going to be a high-scoring game? Oh, absolutely. Isn't it? Oh, I'm sorry. That was me. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> For soccer, it would be a high-scoring game. 7-3 Dolphins here inside the two-minute warning. A couple of uh, turnovers by Miami when they were driving. Story of this first half, Danny Woodhead in again for the Patriots. Takes the ball and gets close to the first down yardage. Danny Woodhead, it was with the Jets if you watch the HBO series, Hard Knocks. Woodhead, a guy who made their team last year. Cut by the Jets, picked up by the Patriots. And a rushing touchdown last week. That's something New England does often and well. Brady keeping it for the first down out to midfield. Danny Woodhead, what a story. 
He and Ben Jarvis Green Ellis. Neither one of these guys were drafted, and they're the feature horses now for the Patriots. And you look over at the Dolphins, they've got Ronnie Brown and Ricky Williams, two top five picks. Pass caught by Welker, gain of five. One timeout for the Pats, 70 seconds in the half. And once again, Mike Nolan, the defensive coordinator for the Dolphins, allowing Brady to throw those short, quick passes, but not giving up the big play. Keep it in front of you. That's the philosophy right now. Tom, complete. Brandon takes third grab to the 35 yard line. Keeps rolling inside of 50 seconds. And this is where Tom Brady is at his best. He sees everything and uses all five eligibles. Got time here and just gets rid of it out of bounds. And incomplete. Keep watching Moss down here with Vontae Davis. Randy has not been thrown to. Brandon Marshall thrown to just once. Well, John, you talk about it oftentimes. You start the week with a theme sometimes, and perhaps that was the theme with both of them. We're not going to let these guys beat us. Don't let these guys beat us. And clearly, they're getting some specialty coverages. Wake off the edge, brought the pressure, but good coverage. And the pass complete to Tate for the first down. Brandon out of bounds at the 23-yard line. And a lot of Randy Moss's problems tonight are Vontae Davis. They're clearly working the other way. Jason Allen, who's been in and out of the lineup at corner and safety, they're working him on that right side. Miami's going to stop it here on defense. Get themselves sorted out. They're half a dozen DBs with their heads spinning as Brady's walking it down the field. Patriots in field goal range, 26 seconds left, first down. To Welker. They line up Moss and Welker so often on that same side. Want to kill it to keep that one time out. Hand signal there from Brady, watch here. Oh, they fake the spike like Marino. Throw to Moss, and he almost caught the touchdown. Did you see Brady grab his face mask and look to Moss? It was the old Marino fake spike, and they almost caught him. And Vontae Davis was very alert on the play. He did not bite the fake spike, stayed with Randy Moss, and forced the throw to the outside by Tom Brady. And Brady's got every shot in the book. Eight seconds, one timeout. One play before a field goal attempt. Brady steps up, is sacked. They'll get the timeout here with one second left. Field goal attempt coming. Let's watch for Brady on that play a moment ago. Always be alert. That wily old veteran Tom Brady, you saw him shake the face mask. That was tipping Randy Moss that he was going to come with the back shoulder throw. The ball just behind him. He may have been able to stay in bounds if he caught it. For those who but don't, I'm sorry, Josh. For those who don't remember, famous Dan Marino play going left to right at the old Meadowlands against the Jets. The fake spike and then throwing a touchdown against the Jets. One of the uh, best moments in that AFC East rivalry. And it was almost pulled off there by Brady and Moss. Toyota Halftime Show coming up with Chris Berman, Chris Mortensen, Adam Schefter as well. Fastest three minutes. We'll talk about the Jets who we see next week. Michael Vick update and Jay Cutler injured last night as well. Toyota Halftime Show coming up. 30-yard field goal for Gostowski. Timeout taken by Miami. The last first half, you know, not not really the flow that I think we expected both ways. Miami's moved the ball better than we thought, but New England until this drive hasn't really kicked into gear. I also think Miami's looking forward to getting in there at halftime, talking to their young quarterback. He's been fooled a couple times. He's forced a couple balls with full protection, and those two interceptions are the turning point in this game. New England will be happy to go to the locker room down by one point. Find a way to get the ball to Brandon Marshall. Feature him a couple times. They need his energy. Remember a bad snap from Jake Ingram a moment ago. That one was a little bit better. And Gostowski pounds it through from 30 yards to end the half. Miami 7, New England 6. Brady and the Pats get the ball to start the third quarter. Now the Toyota Halftime Show and Chris Burke. Boomer.